welcome to the remastered version of Battle of the Ports Double Dragon. In this remastered version, I've dropped the Game Gear and Xbox 360 Double Dragon Neon, as neither are really ports of the original. Okay, so let's talk about the arcade game. This was released in 1987 and came to us from Technos Japan. Double Dragon is considered to be the grandfather of the modern scroll and beat em up, or belt scroller as they've become known these days. The game takes place in New York after a nuclear war. Our heroes Billy Lee and Jimmy Lee are chilling in the garage fixing up their road blaster, when suddenly their love Marion is kidnapped by the violent organization Black Warriors. Guess that means we need to head on out and take down every last lowlife in order to rescue Marion. Now no one can argue that Double Dragon isn't a classic, but one can argue that it has aged really badly. In fact, it was kind of handicapped when it was first released. You see, the arcade hardware this game runs on just can't handle the scope of Double Dragon. The game is constantly changing speed, making for a very uneven experience. It also has collision detection issues with pits and enemies, and the AI is rather cheap at times. These problems kind of make the game a little annoying these days, unlike where Final Fight from 1989 still feels rather good. Still, Double Dragon is a classic, and it is a game we must thank because without it, there wouldn't be a final fight, and with that, there quite possibly would have never been any bare knuckle Streets of Rage, and that would have been a great shame. So let's salute Technos for their innovation, no matter how flawed it may seem these days. In 1988, the Famicom received the port of Double Dragon, and it was actually more fun to play than the arcade game. Sure, it looked worse, but some would say it sounded better. Stages are a little arranged from the original version, plus you get sent back to a checkpoint when you die, which is rather odd for the scrolling fighter. The game is also now only a one-player affair. Well, it does have a two-player mode, but it's not a simultaneous two-player mode. There are bonus items in this version though, such as new areas and a new character known as Chin Tai Mei, who returns in later games. Another change is that you have to gain some attacks. Normally your headbutt and elbow smash are available from the start, but not in this version. Please keep in mind that this is the Japanese release. This may be different for the Western release. Still, even with some changes for the worse, Famicom Double Dragon is a great game for its time. The system port arrived in the same year as the Famicom version, but rather than being developed by Technos, this was reprogrammed by Sega. This is more of a straight arcade port than the Famicom version. It also has a few advantages too, such as being two player simultaneous, more characters on screen at once, and all the moves being present from the very beginning. On the downside, the collision detection can be a little wonky, just like the arcade original. Still, overall, this is a very nice port for the system. Onto the first 16 bit version and it's for the home computer. Yep, you guessed it. Commodore Amiga Time. The game starts off promising with a nice title screen and sampled music from the arcade game. Then the game starts and all is silent. Yep, the music is missing. Not only that, but so is the introduction. Now, all of the non Japanese home computer ports will suffer with the awful one button controls, so I'm not going to dwell on that. But what I will point out is how come 
The backgrounds look rather nice, yet all the characters look as if they were drawn in Microsoft Paint by a 10 year old. Oh well, I will admit that the gameplay is okay. Not great, just okay. However, with there being no music, it really does make this one dull game to play for anything longer than 10 minutes. The Atari ST version is the exact same game that is on the Amiga, but now with less colours being used. Some may say the sound effects are better, they do have more oomph to them, that's for sure. A bit home computer time starting with the Amstrad CPC port and it's a Richard Alpen developed game so yes, this is going to be a very good looking game for the CPC but sadly not too much fun to play. While I greatly appreciate the effort that went into making this a very colourful release, I don't appreciate the sluggish gameplay and horrible AI that likes nothing more than to gangbang you to death. I also don't like how home computer game developers deem the right to replace the music with something else they had lying around, so to save on the effort of recreating the correct music. Oh well. Binary design is behind this Commodore 64 port. There's only one thing I can say about it, it Very dull to play. The enemies just knock you down constantly. Awful, absolutely awful. Commodore 64 got a second release of Double Dragon, this time released by Ocean. This one is better simply because it looks more like Double Dragon, is slightly playable and gives the choice of music or sound effects. Sadly, it's still a poor game. Playability is slow and dull, plus the game keeps loading mid-stage to bring on more characters. This is very annoying. Binary Design, the same developers behind the worst Commodore 64 version, are also responsible for this ZX Spectrum port, and yes, it's just as bad. A horrible version of Double Dragon for sure. This no doubt unofficial port of Double Dragon to the MSX by Zemina looks pretty poor, but believe it or not, it plays better than the Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC and ZX Spectrum ports. It also makes use of two attack buttons which helps with playability an awful lot. Sadly, it's not a great game, but still an interesting take on Double Dragon.
IBM PC compatible time with yet another port by Binary Design. And yes, it's also another stinker. At least their PC effort is more playable than what they did on the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum, but that doesn't mean it's actually worth playing. At least they gave us a choice of CGA, Tandy and EGA color modes. This is the EGA mode you're seeing here. Isn't it funny how this Game Boy port manages to keep the introduction while all the versions from the West did not? Just goes to show where the care has been taken. This version is based upon the Famicom game rather than the arcade. This makes sense since Technos Japan developed both versions. While there's less going on in this Game Boy port, it still manages to be an entertaining and very playable version of Double Dragon that was amazing back in the day. In 1989, Activision released Double Dragon onto the Atari 2600. Now while it's cool to see Double Dragon on a machine that was released way back in 1977, we should be honest and admit this isn't really anything like Double Dragon. It's also extremely difficult as the enemies just bombard you with attacks. Still, at least it has music and sound effects at the same time, something that many other ports couldn't accomplish. Sticking with Atari, here is the 7800 release. I always wonder if Atari were ever embarrassed by what they put out. Considering this came out around a year after the Master System and Famicom versions, they expect it to be better, but sadly not. It's pretty nasty to play with yet again poorly programmed AI that just surrounds the player without any fur battle. The music is also lackluster, with only a few sections of each track being present. Here's a port that gets mixed reviews. Accolade is responsible for this Mega Drive port and they've done a very good job in many areas, but also failed in others. First of all, we have to admit that this game looks nice. Far more appealing than the original. Big sprites, no flicker and colorful too. It moves at a brisk pace too. Maybe a bit too brisk for some. Sadly, the AI is horrendous. Cheap isn't even in it. They basically mimic the player's moves and will often surround you in beating you to death. The awful audio doesn't help either. The music is harsh and scratchy while the sound effects lack any real thump to them. A beat mob needs thumping sound effects to make it feel as if those hits are connecting. Sadly, that isn't the case here. So close yet so far from being a great port. back to Atari with the Lynx version from Telegames. This really does remind me of the Mega Drive port, but with better sound and zoomed in 300%. The massive sprites look cool on a real Lynx, but in reality this zoomed in look really makes the game feel claustrophobic at times. 
I may be wrong, but it seems that the headbutt and elbow smash are missing too. Still, not a bad playing version, all things considered. Rezo Interactive brought a remake of Double Dragon to smartphones back in 2011. Unlike .emu's version, this isn't an emulation of the arcade game, but an all new version. First impressions are mixed however. On one hand I like the new moveset, updated graphics and a range soundtrack, but I really don't like the touch controls, they feel sloppy and lack precise motion. And I really hate the horrible control display that takes up a quarter of the game screen. Was this really necessary? Here's the Xbox 360 version from Razorworks. Sadly this is no longer available for download. Yeah, and a big middle finger to all of those who insist digital distribution is the way forward. Anyway, this looks very much like a reskinning of the arcade game, and that is exactly what it is. It even keeps the slowdown from the arcade. Talk about a half assed attempt. Still, at least it can be said, it is arcade perfect in the playability department. The game graphics look like an Adobe Flash game in most areas. Too smooth for my liking, but you may disagree. Definitely one of those looks which will gather mixed opinions. Renowned by many to be the best version of Double Dragon and I might just have to agree. This is the Game Boy Advance version from Milton. What we have here is a massively revamped game with an all new introduction, improved playability and a massive increase of on screen enemies bringing Double Dragon into the modern age. The only thing to complain about is the scratchy audio, which the GBA is known for. And we're going to finish up with the Zebo version. A console that was released only in certain South American countries, Brazil being the main, with digital only games. Think of it as a consoleized mobile phone. Like the smartphone release, this was also developed by Brizo Interactive. Rather than being a straight up arcade port, Brizo Interactive gave us something that resembles a remake of the GBA game, with added features and a new graphical look. Sadly, I can't comment on how the game plays as it is impossible to get the game over here in Japan. This footage comes from a game trailer. Let's take a look at all those versions of Double Dragon running side by side. Mm -hmm. 